bless the Lord. Y'all ready for the word of God today? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. I thank God for all of you. I thank for God that he has brought you to this place today. I know some of you thought that you just, it was, it was what you, what you wanted to do. And it might have been what you wanted to do, but you know what? It was what God's assignment was for you today was coming to the household of faith. Amen. Because something today is going to be said that is just for you. Pastor Blue would always say that uh, hey, when, when, if you're here, guess what? It's for you. Amen. Say it's for me. It's for me. It's for me. It's for me. Amen. You can make it personal. It's for, I'm, I don't know how many times. Pastor, you was preaching to me. No, I was just preaching. God was talking to you. Amen. I wasn't a me thing. And it's never going to be a me thing. It's always a you and a God thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Let's pray over the word today as we uh, are about ready to receive it. Yes, give me something. Give me something quiet as we pray over the word. Pray with me, family, today. Strong God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this appointed time right now, God. The time where, God, we have sang, sang, sung praises to your name, oh God. God, we, 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 we pray, God, that you have been pleased up until this point that the things that have been read, said, acted upon, even thought about, God, has been pleasing to you, has been, uh, God, a sweet-smelling aroma, God, in your divine nostrils. And we thank you, God. Be pleased because all that we do today, God, we do it, God, uh, to your glory. There's no form or fashion here, God. It is all to your glory. Only you, God, and you alone are worthy of all the praise. And so, Father God, thank you for bringing us to this moment, to this point where we can now, God, dive into your word, God, where we can immerse ourselves into your word, Father, where we can uh, uncover, God, everything that's in your word. Because, God, the beauty about your word as opposed to any other writing in the world is that everything God everything Father all things God that are in your word are true now we can read some other things and, and we're going to have to decipher where the truth is. But in your word, God, it is all true. So we are blessed, God, today to be able to look into your word and to glean from your word. Speak to your people, God. Use me as nothing more than just an instrument of delivery, God, that your people may receive and be blessed today by it. This I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Bless the Lord. Well, I am so uh, thankful and so happy to see you here today. Amen. That you were led to come out to, to our service today. Amen. That what God has, he has for you today. Last week, I finished up on a a mini series, a three part series that I had entitled God Through Difficult Times. Amen. And you know, I don't want to harp on difficult times, but the reality is we are in some difficult times. Now, the word difficult could, you know, that's kind of a relative word. What is difficult to you, brother, may, may be not difficult to me, but, uh, but we know this nothing is difficult for God. Amen. So whatever we're going through, amen, uh, in this season of, as the, that some would say, as this season of uncertainty, whatever we're going through, we know that, uh, that uh, God is greater than anything that we are going through. Amen. Bless the Lord. Sometimes we don't give God enough credit for who God is. Amen. We want to we wanna use God in the, in the vernacular of, in case of an emergency, break glass. Well, I tell you what, there's been a lot of glass being shattered over these last few few months. Amen. Well, there's a lot of folk who didn't know know the Lord. And you know, sometimes, hey, you know what? And it's it's not for us to 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 be a judge, jury on it, but sometimes it does take uh, some difficult times to change a heart, a heart for God. Amen. 
Some folk don't know God. But it's, it's better to not know God and to find him than to know of him but never accept him. Or accept his son Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Until God purposes and directs Jesus back for us. Amen. Pastor, we have time. Amen. We have time. What do we have time to do? You have time to continue to work in your assignment. What is your assignment? I don't know what you and God have been talking about. Have you and God been talking? That goes back to that pray thing again. I can just preach all around about that all day today. Amen. You don't spend any time talking to God. How are you going to know what God wants you to do? Amen. Everything else is on you trying to figure it out. Well, I don't want to figure it out. I want to hear from the Lord. Amen. Lord, what is it that you would have for me to do today? And I make my assignments a daily assignment. Amen. The Lord gives me breath in my body. I wake up with a praise on my lips. Amen. I pray in the Lord, what is my assignment today? What would you have me to do today? I know there's some things I want to do today, but God, uh, you, what do you have today? Amen. So listen, I pray that that series that, that was brought to you, um, um, uh, brought uh, you, uh, you a, a season or just a, 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 a month of what I would call spiritual restoration. I hope that uh, that this uh, series uh, brought you to a, a thinking that uh, that uh, that you had not been before, and you know if your spiritual tanks maybe would have been running a little bit low. You know, I pray that during that season or that lecture that they have been refilled, amen, or being refilled even as we as we speak, amen. You know, just like uh, I would even liken it to an automobile, just like an automobile, uh, you know, when we are going about uh, our daily driving habits, oftentimes we don't realize uh, because we're just doing what we do. We get in our cars and we drive. We don't realize that, uh, that the low fuel uh, indicator light has come on. Amen. We, sometimes you look down and, and that's, why, that's why I guess somebody uh, was smart enough to put that indicator light on your car. Uh, so you know that you know, you're running a little bit low uh, on, on fuel. And, and that light, it comes on to alert us that we are approaching empty. That, that we, it's time for us to what? To stop and get some fuel. To refuel. And see, I understand, I want you to understand, uh, brothers and sisters with me this morning, or this afternoon, or wherever we are. Understand that navigating through these difficult times, that we navigate uh, uh, through these unsettling times, these whatever times you want to call it, we may not know that we may be running a little bit low on spiritual fuel. Uh-oh, here we come. We may not, we may, we, it, it, the, 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 the light has to come on and let us know that, you know what? We're running a little bit low on spiritual fuel. Now, y'all watch how I'm going to go with this. Amen. Amen. Listen, maybe when we know that we're running maybe a little bit low on spiritual fuel is maybe because of all that's going around and we get all, all center focused on problems and situations and circumstances. We haven't seen the light come on. That's why folk be running out of gas. They're so enamored in the things that they got to do. Amen. The next thing they know, the car is like... <laughs> Now you're looking and, and you look down and you're like, what? Trying to start the car? You know, you, you got AAA on the phone. AAA comes like, did you check your gas, your, your gas gauge? <laughs> Duh, I could have had a V8. Yeah, yeah. You, you, next thing you know, you done ran out of fuel. Didn't even know it because you were so busy dealing with whatever it is you're dealing with. Your mind was preoccupied in wherever it was. But when we, sometimes when we run low on our spiritual fuel, let me give you some indicators of when or why or how you may be running low on spiritual fuel. I'm getting ready to give you the lights, get ready to come on, that little amber light. I'm getting ready to give you a spiritual amber light for you this morning. Maybe we don't pray with the same fervency as we used to. Come on, watch now, watch now. Maybe we don't read our Bibles with the consistency as we used to. Y'all see this light? 
Maybe we don't reach out to those in need with the constancy that we used to. Ah, it must be about me. I'm all enamored in, the, in, the, in this thing uh, uh, called, called COVID-19 and, uh, uh, and all these other things that are going on. But, but we don't see that the, the, the meter is, is running low. Maybe, watch this, maybe we don't live with the same resiliency that we used to. Unknowingly, brothers and sisters, we're running low on spiritual fuel. You see, that is why that we pastors and, and church leaders and, and those who, who teach the word, that's why we're doing all that we can do during this pandemic or during these pandemic times. That's why we're doing all that we can do to feed you with the word of God. Amen. Whether, whether we're, we're doing it, um, you know, whether we're back open and we're in our houses of worship, whether we're uh, doing things remotely, you know, Zoom or, or what is it, the uh, uh, live feeds or whatever, whether we may be having a radio station frequency in our parking lot and doing parking lot ministry, whatever. It, we are charged with Pastor you and I and, and the clergy and the teacher. We are charged with what? Feeding you the word of God so that you don't run out. So that, watch this now, so that, so that, that, that your, your spiritual fuel does not deplete itself to the point where you are no more, uh, or, or no good at functioning, amen, in what Christ would have for you, what God would have for you, what the assignment is for you. You can't function in your assignment if you're only running on low fuel, amen. First thing, next thing you know, you done ran out. God might have had somebody that you needed to talk to today, but yet, ah, uh, 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 you didn't get up. Because you worried about something else that's, that's going to happen all about around you. When God said, your assignment today is to go talk to somebody else. I've already, yeah, listen, you don't have to make no cold calls. God is already going to set it up for you. God is already going to direct you into where he would have you to be. God is already going to direct you in what he would have you to say. You don't even have the scripture that you don't even have to worry about what to say. God will word your mouth. Just be obedient. The whole thing is be obedient. Amen. Running low on spiritual fuel. But we're going to keep feeding you. Amen. Because that's what our charge is. And so just for a little while, I just want, I ain't going to keep you long today, amen. But just for a little while, I want to talk about spiritual fullness. Spiritual fullness. I want that to permeate in your mind. Say it with me. Spiritual. I'm not supposed to make you say anything. I'm sorry. Don't say fullness. I'll just say it for you. I get, say, you know what? Uh, I just, uh, you know, that's how, it, that's how I roll. Amen. I'm sorry. Spiritual. Don't tell me about it. Pastor, you ain't supposed to be talking. But is this a library? <laughs> Good Jesus. But I want to talk about spiritual fullness. In other words, being spiritually full. Can I talk about that just for a little bit today? See, listen. Spiritual fullness satisfies our deepest needs. That's what spiritual fullness is all about. It satisfies our deepest needs. Now I'm going to start and I'm going to work this thing from a physical point of view first. Let me, let me, let me just set this up physically because sometimes you got to set it up the way they can see it with their regular eyes. Amen. So let me, let me, let me, let me make this point to you from a physical uh, standpoint uh, of view. Do you know, and everybody knows how you feel after you have had a Good and complete meal. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. It just came out like that. Do you know how you feel after you've been, after you've had a good meal, especially like at dinner time? Because, you know, during the day we rush, we rush through uh, breakfast to get out to work or wherever. We may grab a sandwich on the way. But when we get home to our families, you know, we maybe have some time, Pastor, to settle down and enjoy what I call dinner. You can call it supper. You can call it whatever you want. But, 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 but after that, when you've had a good meal, and uh, 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 Deacon, I'm not supposed to say names. One of the things they said, don't say names when, you know, because we're, we're, we're broadcasting. But Deacon, I'm pointing at you. I remember coming to your house. 
I remember, yeah, Deacon, wave your hand back at me so you'll know I'm talking to you. Come on, yes, you, Deacon, the one who's looking around. Wave your hand to me. Wave your hand to me. I, I, I remember, I remember, and y'all still doing it. I remember. Boy, them, them Sunday dinners, woo! Mm -mm -mm. But you know what? How did you feel when you had that, that, that meal? How, how did you feel? Well, I'm going to tell you how you felt because you felt like me. You felt completely satisfied. Yes. Amen? Ain't nothing when you're hungry and you get something to eat. You feel completely satisfied. And maybe uh, to the point where, and if we don't overeat now, that you, you felt so satisfied that you said, I can't put nothing else in my mouth. I'm good. Amen? I'm ready to move back from the table and, 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 and keep it pushing. Now watch this. One of the things that I've been trying to do, this is a personal thing. I'm just going to give me a little latitude this morning. One of the things that I've been trying to do, especially in the midst, in the midst of this COVID thing that's had us basically sheltered in place, amen, has had us sheltered in our homes. One of the things that I've been trying to do personally, because we have had some, you know, some of the good things about being sheltered in place is I've had the time to um, spend with family over meal time. You know, we come and we go. My wife works, and bless her heart, when she gets home, you know, she starts working. I mean, she's out of the door at 5 o'clock, so she ain't really trying to fill you too much longer after about the 7 o'clock hour, you know, bless her heart. So, uh, yeah, and I feel for my baby because, see, I can't cook. I mean, I can bowl a hot dog and, and some things like that. I ain't going to starve, but uh, my grandkids who live with us, they be like, is grandma coming home? When grandma come out, shut up. We're going to McDonald's. Y'all know the drill. And I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be extra nice to you today. I'm going to get you the, 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 the Happy Meal and ask for two toys. <laughs> but you, but, but we, we, we feel satisfied. So I've been trying to discipline myself that after that dinner that I just don't beeline right for the couch. That I just don't beeline right for my easy chair. I got both. I got one of them nice chairs. I got, I got a nice one. That I don't be lying. For, I've been disciplining myself, disciplining myself to get up after, I, after I've pushed back from the table to get up. Now, understand, I am completely satisfied to get pushed back from the table and to get up and to go for a walk. Yes, to go for a walk. I'll go out and I'll take about a 15, 20, 25 minute. If I'm feeling really chipper, I'll take a 30 minute walk. I'll walk around. Our neighborhood is right conducive because it's like one of these big old circles. Y'all never have to go out on the main street. I can just keep walking, keep waving to the same people. <laughs> they count my laps. <laughs> And I do that now, and I'm, I'm trying to, and I am, I'm an everyday guy, but I'm trying to do this so that, that um, um, it will help my food to digest, and I'm just not, you know, just not uh, doing, um, uh, like I said, heading to the couch. Because here's the deal. If you, and I, I'm, there's no shame in my game, I was a couch header. After I get through eating, I'm headed to the couch. Move over, boy. Get out my seat. <laughs> The, the, the reason that, that, uh, that I felt that I had to make a change because not only is going straight to the couch or to the easy chair a potential conduit to let you put on some LBs. You can put on some LBs real quick. We got a, we got a former Ohio State basketball player. Look at him, looking real good. Miss Lee, we're going to talk a little bit when we get some time, but I'm so happy to see you this morning. Amen. So listen, listen, we, 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 we don't want to just go head to, to, the, to the couch. We, we want to be, you know, be a little more active. And so, so it is spiritually. Now let me bring it back to you from a spiritual standpoint. Amen. After we have sufficiently, Pastor, filled up on the Word of God. Amen. Listen. We do not want to give way to spiritual lethargy because that's what happens physically. If you keep going to the couch, you start feeling lethargic. You start feeling tired. You get in what they call a food coma. You can't move. Next thing you know, you it's tomorrow morning. <laughs> so spiritually, once we have filled up on the word of God, hey, hey, we push uh, uh, out, out, out of the word of God. And when I say push out, to again, be active in the Word of God. It does you no good to 
be a hearer of the word of God only and not be a doer of the word. And it tells us in James 5 and 22. It says, but be ye what? Doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. Amen. See, it, you know, we, it, it, it helps us that, that, that when we are spiritually full, after we've digested what God has given to us, then we must be uh, uh, active with what we have. We can't just go take it and just go sit with it. Somebody needs that. Again, your assignment. Somebody needs that. What you have filled up on. They may be running a little low. Maybe they don't even know that their spiritual indicator is on and is low. Maybe they're not reading their Bibles as they used to. Maybe they're not doing some of the things like they used to. Amen. But I, we were called now to, we were like one of them, what do you call them? Them little batteries now that you can do for your iPhone. For your, I, I have an iPhone. For your phone where you don't have to plug it in. You got this little battery thing. I've got two or three of those things I just carry with me. My battery gets low on my phone. Plug it right into this thing. We must be that battery. That we, we must be that spiritual power. Amen? That, that somebody may need to plug into. They did that one commercial where the one person was sitting in an airport. It was a very quick montage of all these different things. But the one person let the other person use their battery to charge their phone. Y'all remember seeing that? We got to be that. Amen? We are full. We have full, filled up. On the word of God. We are full in Christ Jesus. Now we just don't want to walk. Because here's the deal. I did a little test. I wanted to know how long that that little battery thing. Would actually last. Uh, hold a charge. Without me physically plugging my, my phone into it. Shoot I did a test. It was like it was over a month. And it was still fully charged. So what am I saying to this? What metaphor am I trying to make? What analogy am I trying to make? I am saying that if we have filled up on the word of God, we'll stay full unless we allow someone to plug into us, unless we allow ourselves to go out and to minister the word of God to somebody. Somebody may just be hurting. Somebody may just need a hug. I know we're in some COVID times, but somebody may need a refreshing. Somebody may need a pick-me-up. Somebody may need a smile. Pull your mask down. Give them a smile. Throw your mask back up and keep it pushing. Y'all yeah. missing this. Y'all missing this. Preach. Preach. We got to be active. Not just doers. And, and, and here's what I like. And watch. Let me, let me work this out. Be 522, James 522, 5 and 22. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Watch this. Deceiving your own selves. Uh oh. Deceiving your own selves. Oh, well, what, what, what's, what's the writer? What, what's he talking about? See, it's easy to deceive ourselves and for, for us to fit, think that we are uh, spiritually fit and lean, that we are fit and mean. It's easy for us to deceive ourselves. Yeah, I done went to Bible study. Yeah, I done read the Bible. Yeah, I went to church. I'm good. I'm fit. I'm lean. I'm full. When in reality, we've become spiritually lazy and lethargic. Not being active in the word of God. Yes, we're hearers. But on the door front, we ain't doing nothing. That seems like a me thing, amen? That seems like a, that's a, that must be a personal thing. And if I were to break it down... and I. It, James 5 and 20, be doers of the word. And here is not only deceiving on your own selves. Let me break it down to the most slang terms. Amen. You can't just hear about it. You got to be about it. You got to be about it. We have got to be about it. You know, one of the most recited scripture in the Bible is Psalms 23. Psalms 23. It's one of the most recited, most memorized verses in the Bible. Short of Jesus wept for all you Bible scholars. <laughs> okay, that went over your head. Okay, I'll keep it pushing. Psalms 23. And Psalms 23, I'm not going to have you turn to that, but Psalms 23 in verse 5 of Psalms 23, and I'll read it to you. It speaks to our fullness in God. We're talking about uh, spiritual fullness today. 
Psalms uh, chapter, uh, Psalms verse tw or 20, 23rd Psalms verse 5. And here's what it says. It says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Yeah. And so I started just thinking about that. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Let me work with that just for a little bit. In the present of COVID-19, God has prepared a table before me. In the presence of COVID-19. Yeah. In the presence of hate and cynicism, even from the highest office in the country, yeah, 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 you read between the lines, God has prepared a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. In the presence of social injustice where black lives do matter, God has prepared a table for me. For us. Now I want you to watch this. Watch this. It's not. Don't let the significance be too much on the table. As it is what is being prepared on the table. Y'all with me? Not, not, not the table. What is being prepared on the table. That's what's for you. Amen. What's on the table. See, all that God has put on this table is for us to feast on. Amen? But watch this. While, uh, uh, while, we're, while we're feasting, God is fighting yeah. for us. Yeah. Amen? In the presence of our enemies, COVID, uh, social injustice, hate, cynicism, and all these other acronyms and things that we could put out there that are negative. In the presence of these enemies, we will feast while God will fight. And this is what I was saying last week when I was talking about victory. Amen? Th talking about victory being won uh, uh, or having victory before the battle was even won. Amen? Uh, uh, even though some of the battlefronts that we still are facing, right? Even though some of those battlefronts are yet to be won, we know that the Lord or that the fight is the Lord and not ours. Yeah. Yeah. Now we got to put something in on this. Amen? But God has put a table in the presence Prepare the table in the presence of our enemies. You know, I remember going, my family and I, going to Jamaica a few years back, uh, two, three, four, five years ago. We went to Jamaica, and we went to one of those all-inclusive deals, right, where uh, most of you probably have done that either, um, uh, or maybe on one of the cruise ships as well. I haven't, I haven't cruised yet. I don't want to get out there in the water. I can't swim, and I don't like sharks. So, so but, but I say we went to this... Um, we went to this uh, all-inclusive resort, and we had a great time. But the highlight for me was at dinner time, because we would go into these huge room. I would call it, for lack of a better term, a banquet room. Just huge. I mean, from here to that door, seriously. And they would just have anything on this table that your heart could desire. If you wanted desserts, go way down there. If you wanted entrees, go here. If you wanted salads, go here. If you wanted different, the different cuisines, go here, here, and here. And I, I again, I hear it's the same way on cruise ships for those who have, I guess, taken cruise. And so uh, what I would say when we talk about this, buff and it was all buffet, you just go up, you know, get, get your plate and, and, and get busy. And so I would say to that, you know, if you left that buff buffet, and you weren't completely satisfied, that it was your fault. Amen. That was your fault. Amen? The table that God has prepared for us in the presence of our enemies. Amen? We can, you know, uh, uh, we can partake uh, uh, of, of the fullness of God's blessings from this table. 
Amen? Now listen. God sets his blessings before us. Yes, God sets his blessings before us, but it's up to us to partake of them. Amen? All these blessings on the table. You know what I'm saying? You can lead a, a horse to, to the water, but you can't make him drink. The blessings are set there for you. But it's up to you to go and to be partakers of these blessings. The Bible tells us in Matthew 5, chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 6. Just write some of these down. I'm not going to have you turn to anything today. I just want you to get these so you'll, maybe you'll actually do some Bible study on your own. Amen. The Bible, it tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 26, it says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That's a promise. That's not they will, that's not maybe. You know, if they, maybe they will find something that they, that they like on this. No, if you thirst and hunger for righteousness, God says, Jesus said, you will be filled. You will not leave unsatisfied. Amen? But you have to seek after. You have to have a thirst and a hunger. See, before you can be a blessing reaper, you have to first be a blessing seeker. Yeah, yeah. See, we got to put our play, our, we got to put ourselves in the place where God's blessings are flowing. Amen? Folk want to want to know why, why they're not being blessed. Because you're not in a position, you're not, you don't have yourself in the place where God is blessing. Amen? And, and God blesses, uh, we, our, our minds have got to be right. If your mind is all bent, bent on hell and confusion, guess what? It's hard to be blessed. And, and the problem is, you can't be blessed because you're blocking your blessings. Yeah. Amen? So you can't be blessed. Yeah. The blessings are there. So you have to put yourself in the conduit where God's blessings are flowing. Amen? Nobody is more blessed than anybody else. They just know where their blessings come from. They just know how to receive their blessings. They just know how to work in their blessings. They just know how to, how to live in their blessings. Amen? The blessings are there. Don't leave unsatisfied from the table of God's blessings. But that's, all, that, that's on you. See, once again, and I'm going to say this even another time, the blessings of God are the spiritual fullness of that satisfies our deepest needs. Y'all might have to go watch the video on that. I'm going to get that one in your spirit. Amen. See, Paul, the great apostle Paul, he wrote in Romans uh, chapter 15, verse 29. He wrote and he says this. He says, I am sure that when I come to you, and this was a letter as he was preparing to go to Rome, right? He hadn't gotten to Rome yet, but he was preparing. He says, I am sure that when I come to you, I shall come in the, watch this, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. In other words, what Paul was saying was that when I come to you, I'm coming to you fully satisfied in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am fully satisfied. There's nothing else in the gospel that I need to be convinced of. And there's nothing that no one needs to sway me. I come to you uh, fully satisfied in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everything that Paul says I'm going to give to you, I'm going to give to you because I'm full. And not only am I full, I am fully satisfied in in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's how we should approach our witnesses. We should approach our witnesses, amen, coming to them, being fully satisfied in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're not, wait, listen, we don't have to be Bible scholars, but at least you got to know what you're saying if you're going to try to witness and you're going to throw out a scripture. Don't throw out a scripture if you ain't read it. Don't throw out a scripture if you don't know what you're talking about. All you got to do is get your scriptures and go ahead and study them. Study to show thyself approved. Yeah. Study. Amen. I'll tell you what, folk will find a fake in a minute, a fake Christian in a minute. They'll know them. They'll know a Sunday Christian, brother. They'll know it in a minute. It's just like, it's like uh, uh, Satan tried to trip up God. 
well, this is what the, you know, this is what, this is what God said. And, you know, that uh, you shouldn't, you're not going to uh, 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 stub your toe and then do all these things. Say, say, like, say no scripture too. Now he tried to put it out of context. So you got to know what you're talking about. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. Get you some power scriptures in your head. Study them. Be proficient with them. And be prepared to use them. Amen? Amen. Because you never know when God has purposed you for that day to give your assignment. See, Paul says, see, I'm, I'm coming to you fully satisfied in the gospel. I'm not thirsting. I'm not hungering for anything concerning the gospel. I'm going to give it to you like I got it. And I hope and, 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 I, and, my, and my prayer is that you will be full as well. Amen? That table, God prepared for us in the presence of our, uh, of our enemies. Uh, there's fullness to be had. We just talked about it. There's fullness to be had in the blessings that are on that table. There's fullness to be had in, the, uh, in, in joy on that table. You need to be filled up on joy? Guess what? That table is offering joy. There's fullness to be had in peace on that table. I remember back, and I keep making these metaphoric things. I had so much, I had to get two plates. I was like, I don't care what y'all think of me. Y'all ain't going to see me no more ever again. I ain't never coming back to Jamaica again, I don't think. So I'm in there with two, three plates. Them plates, and I love it because you didn't have to, you know, buffet. You just leave your plate on the table. Shoot, when I was done. That plates everywhere. You couldn't even see my face. <laughs> Looking around them plates. Amen. There's fullness to be had, as the psalmist said, my cup runneth over. There's fullness to be had in the overflowing cup that's on this table. The overflowing cup is me. It says that I've got more than enough. More than enough. More than I need. But God keeps pouring more into me. God keeps blessing me over and over and over again. And I, if I had a box of Kleenex, I got to use this analogy one more time. I know, uh, Derek, I'm going to step out of the field of vision here. But I, wanna, I just got to see this. I've used this before, but I'm going to use it again. Here's God's blessings. That, and this is that cup that overflows. Every time you take a blessing from God, guess what? Another one pops up. Come on, come on. Amen. You take a blessing from God, another one pops up. Always to, to, to eventually, you ain't even going to be able to navigate all of these blessings. Because they continue to overflowing. Amen. My cup runneth over. The fullness of joy. John chapter 15 verse 11. Just write it down. More like a Bible study today, amen. John 15 and 11, talking about the fullness of joy. These things, said uh, Jesus, have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. See? This, that, this, that, this, that, 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 that power thing. That, that analogy I'm trying to make to you. That, my, that I, I have, the things I have spoken to you that my joy might remain where? In you. Not on you. Not around you. That my joy might remain in you. There's a difference between on you and in you. Amen? See, listen, you know, remain, that, that your joy might be full. It's what Jesus desired. You know, and, and I think about today, listen, there's, and I'm, I'm going to pick on the Christians just a little bit today. There's a lot of Christians that are walking around with no joy. <laughs> you think because you're a Christian, you know, oh, he's a Christian, he's very joy. No, there's a whole lot of Christians that are walking around with no joy. You know why? 
I'm glad you asked me why. Let me tell you why. There's so many Christians walking around with no joy. They're walking around with no joy because Satan wants to attack them. He doesn't have to care. He doesn't care about the ones he's already got. He wants the Christians. He wants to take your joy because he knows that if you've got the joy of the Lord, you got something. You're powerful. You're purposeful. You got all these things in line. But he wants to, hey, he wants to, he wants to attack you. He wants to take your joy. The other joy don't make no difference. They ain't got no joy anyway. They're just out there doing their things. Joy. And, 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 and you know, and that's what happens. Here's how the Christians try to get around that. The, the Christians, they try to get around it by what I call manufacturing what they think is joy. They try to do their own self-manufacturing. And, but, but, but at the end of the day, uh, they're, they're, they don't, they're not self-manufacturing joy. What they're doing is op uh, operating in what I call a substitute called happiness. Happiness. Happiness is temporal. Temporary. Happiness is just based on what is happening around you, about you. Somebody stepped on your new tennis shoes today, you happy. Boss ain't looked at you crooked or talked to you sideways, you happy. These little temporary things, they go away. You know, I remember when I worked for the state, um, they had uh, the state cars. Uh, any, any state employees here or any retired state employees? I'm a retired state employee. And, you know, and if you wanted to get a state car, they, there was a push, and I'm, I'm kind of dating myself now. That's okay. I just had a birthday. I can do that. Um, where you... They had this big push, and I don't know if it was in the, I uh, started working in the 80s all the way to the 2000s, so sometime maybe in the 90s, maybe in the early 2000s, where they wanted you to use ethanol in these state cars instead of, I guess, gasoline. You know, they, they had um, contracted with certain gasoline stations that you could pull up to a pump, and the pump usually had like green badging on it so that you would know that it was an ethanol pump. Yeah, state, state cars, we want to we wanna start using this ethanol thing. And um, in my humble opinion, uh, I said, well, ethanol is a fake substitute for gasoline. I never went to that ethanol pump. I put ethanol in that because I had to go out in the middle of Podunkville. And uh, uh, a black boy ain't going out in the, middle of the, in the middle of the sticks. And all of a sudden, this ethanol thing don't pan out. Forget that. And I've been out. I've been out in the sticks. We had some field offices. Shoot, all you heard was banjos and crickets. Uh, no, no, no. So I ain't gonna put this ethanol in this car because I, I'm like ethanol ain't real gas. Amen. And that, that's what that's that's what I'm I'm, I'm making uh, trying to make here is that happiness is a fake substitute for joy. It's a fake substitute for joy. Yeah, it might get you down the road for a minute. Amen. It might sustain you for a little while. But, but at the end of the day, it's temporary. Amen. The fullness of joy is spiritually based on our true faith. No, don't say true faith. I was going to have you say it. Based on our true faith in Christ Jesus and our right standing with God the Father. That's, 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 that's true joy. That's the fullness of joy. That spiritual fullness that satisfies our deepest need. If y'all don't remember anything else, I want you to understand that. The fullness of peace. And I'm going to get through this. There's a fullness of peace. Philippians 4 and 7. The fullness of peace. And this is, a, this is just one of our power scriptures here at Columbus Bible Way. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Shall keep or shall guard. The word keep means shall guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It's the fullness of peace that moves us outside of our earthly problems and situations and circumstances. It's the fullness of peace. It's that when someone looks at you and the world is all in chaos like it is now, you seem to project a different way, a different attitude, 
and I'm just going to put, I'm just going to put my, our pastor right here. I'm just going to put him on, 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 at, I'm just going to put, pastor, it's, this, 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 this pastor, he's a loving pastor, and he is full of peace. I, I, I spent a lot of time with him. And he's got situations and circumstances in his life, just like we all do. But the pastor has a peace that passes understanding. He gets it. He knows. And he lives by it. It's this peace. Outside of all the problems and circumstances, he's always smiling. Now, he'll take care of business when business got to be taken care of. But he's always smiling. Always receptive. Always ready to allow you to plug in and be filled up on what God has given him. Amen? Amen? He's always available. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4 and 8. All I did was just back up one verse. Or move ahead one verse. It says, finally brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if and if there be any praise, think on these things. So what is the writer telling us? Paul, our thinking is connected to our fullness of peace. You can control that. Amen? You want to take from the table peace? You have to be in the right mind. You have to be thinking on the things where peace resides. Amen? So I close with this. Brothers, why don't y'all go ahead and come on up. Musicians, come on up. Let me close with this, family. To understand the fullness, or to understand spiritual fullness, let me redirect that. To un that's, what we've been talk that's what we've been talking about today, spiritual fullness, being spiritually filled. To understand spiritual fullness is to first understand the fullness of God. Can't do one without the other. Amen? And so our Bibles tell us in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 19. It says, And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. What Paul is telling us is that it begins with the love of Christ. You have to have a relationship with Christ. No one comes to the Father except by me, said Jesus. Amen. You have to have a relationship with Christ. Because your relationship with Christ, amen, is going to propel you. It's going to put you in the conduit to the fullness of God. And here's what you're going to find as you're in this conduit. Amen. Or as, as we operate and live in the fullness of God. Here's what you're going to find. The fullness, the fullness of God encapsulated is his love for us. That's it encapsulated. We want to be, we, we want to know, we talk about the, the satisfying of our deepest desires. It's just one thing. It's the love of God. What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Not a thing. It's the love of God that gives us and allows us to be, allows us to walk, allows us to operate in spiritual fullness. We are full. We don't walk away from the table unsatisfied. Amen? So I encourage you today my sisters and brothers in Christ, I encourage you today that even though we are navigating through these difficult times, that we understand and then that we not allow our, our spiritual fuel to run low. Now we got to use it, certainly. But we don't want it to run low to the point where we run out. Amen. How, how do we do this? We keep praying. We keep believing. We keep trusting. Amen. We keep doing. We keep witnessing. We keep praising. How about that one? 
Yeah. Yeah. How about that one? We keep praising God for his goodness. And that way we don't have to, even in our activity, even in our doing, our spiritual uh, fuel will never run low. And if your spiritual fuel is running low, if your spiritual energy may be running low, uh, your, you can always find a Christian who is fully satisfied. Plug into him. Plug into him. Yeah. Amen. You don't have to, you know, look, don't, don't, don't try to, they're, they're, not, they're not your lawyer and your doctor and all of this, but plug into them. Let them pray with you. Not for you. Let them pray with you. You got to pray for yourself, amen? But let them bring to you that which you may be a little bit low on, amen? Next thing you know, you're full. Then someone can plug into you. Amen? Amen. That's the word of God today. Bless the Lord. As we prepare to go home, I would like to open up the doors of the church. Uh, but before I do open up the doors of the church, uh, when we adjourn, obviously for our social distancing practices and to be right, those, if you're able, those who are in this side will be directed by our usher here. And he will direct you and usher will there direct you to adjourn out of our side door. Those who are on my left, probably your right, you will be ushered in by our ushers to adjourn through the back doors. Amen. There should be uh, offering baskets for your tithes and your offerings. Buy the baskets. Amen. And uh, uh, we'll do that. But I wanted to open up the doors. If if there's anyone in our in, in this in this room under the sound of my voice even on our recording today that if you don't know God as your personal or Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and you want a relationship if you feel like you've been running a little bit empty on spiritual fuel then come come up come up front we will social distance and you can accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you just want to come on what I call Christian experience, you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're just looking for a church home and you want to, uh, you want to uh, be a part of a fellowship. Come forward. We'll love on you hard. We'll, 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 we'll certainly uh, take your confession of faith and we'll, and we'll, um, We'll eventually put you to work. We're not putting most, a lot of folk to work right now in these times. Amen. I pray for God. Uh, I pray. Uh, uh, thank God. Amen. Bless the Lord. Well, I know only of uh, at least one uh, voice that I have not heard today. Um, and that's Brother uh, Treg Lee. Uh, Brother Treg, would you like to stand, sir? And uh, just give us anything that God may have for you. Uh, appreciate you so much if there's anything you'd like to stand and say I can't come to you with a microphone but uh, please bless the Lord amen bless the Lord bless the Lord do we have anyone else that I might have overlooked amen anyone else Bless the Lord. Well, with that being said, if you're able to stand, please stand with me as we prepare to go home. with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for an opportunity to come to your house of worship, God, to give you praise, all glory and honor. God, we, we pray and we uh, that you, God, were pleased that everything was done decent and in order, God, and God, uh, that uh, God, that we were what you would have us to be, pleasing in your sight. Father, I thank you for the people today who have come out, the people who uh, are watching the recording, God. I thank you, God. Continue to bless as only you can, God. Heal 
as only you can, God. Provide as only you can, Father. For we, your people, God, we need you. God, we need you. Even more than ever, God. We've always needed you, but even in these sundry times, God, we need you. And God, it's comforting to know that in your word, you told us that you would never leave us nor forsake us. God, we stand on that promise. That promise is what propels us. That, pro that promise is what sustains us. So give your people this week, God, a week of uh, increase. Increase in whatever they do. God, just like you did for your servant uh, uh, Joseph, whatever they touch, God, let it be profitable to them. Amen. God, uh, we, we, we ask, God, that you would bless the tithes and the offerings as your people have continuously, God, with an open heart, uh, given to the work of the ministry. Bless them. Bless their finances, God. Multiply back to them, God, in their giving. And for those who may not have the wherewithal, God, to give in these times, especially in these times, God, let them be a receiver of good things, of good gifts, God. So God, we thank you that we are purposed and ready for this new week. Set the course, God. Set our course. Give us our assignment. And for this, we give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. We pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Jesus loves you. That concludes our service today. Bless the Lord.